In today's edition of ICIT Fellow Insights, we'll speak with Juan Espinoza, an ICIT Fellow and Senior Project Manager, and Jack D. Odin, an ICIT Contributor and Principal Project Manager at Parsons, who will talk about the importance of converging IT and OT and provide insights on the important elements of a well thought out program. I am Juan Espinosa, uh, ICIT Fellow. I'm a Senior uh, Project Manager with Parsons Corporation. I am Jack Oden, ICIT Contributor and Principal Project Manager and ICS Cybersecurity Subject Matter Expert. Uh, so organizations today um, work together between IT and OT groups to accomplish the final mission of the organization. They are already merged today. Uh, so if you look at their networks and systems, OT and IT look so much alike. They are already, with the technology of today's world, look exactly the same. However, there are fundamental differences. There are differences in the design, there's differences in the security and priorities, and there's difference in the skill set that you need to do the administration and security for each one. The, the situation in an, in an OT heavy organization is the IT organizations tend to be relegated to a secondary role, a support role. There's actually nothing wrong with that, but it tends to minimize the support that, they, that is required. And so what you need in such an organization, an OT heavy organization, is you need the specialization that you get from the IT organization. And so w with respect to uh, convergence, you want to bring that organization to the fore. I think the same can apply at, at the opposite. Uh, uh, IT heavy organizations also will benefit a lot from the understanding of the OT side of the things and how things actually operate behind the scenes, behind the IT network. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's a few challenges that we, we have seen. Uh, one of the big challenges is organization. So if uh, executives and leadership would understand that the two groups need to work together, uh, putting forward policy would be a lot easier. So that's a big challenge right now. The other challenge is, is the skill gap. There's a huge skill gap between the OT and the, and the IT. Uh, historically, they have been evolving in their own silos, right? So you have the IT guys of the world with the different type of networks, different type of operating systems, uh, different type of tools, and they, each one is very specialized. And on the other hand, you have the OT guys, you know, focusing on their proprietary systems, uh, which is their niche, a uh, source of a competitive advantage, and they have their own uh, security capabilities and tools. So trying to integrate those two is a real challenge. Uh, and they're very specialized. So there's really not a shortcut to this issue. You know, IT guys really need to start understanding how the OT networks work, what are the security challenges associated with those. And at the same time, OT guys really need to understand the IT language and the new tendencies and vulnerabilities in the IT networks because they depend on them. Uh, the final challenge is really funding. There's a huge misunderstanding of how funding goes with ITOT convergence. Typically, an IT security patching process is, generally speaking, a, a low profile, not that expensive for an upgrade. However, if you don't have the OT knowledge, you might not be aware that when you're doing a routine patch, you might be affecting the OT network to a point that you need to have a huge upgrade and retrofit of the controls network. So something that started like for you know a quarter of a million upgrade yeah. ended up being three million upgrade just because you needed to rebound the whole uh, antiquated, not up to speed OT network. Okay. Sure, yeah, uh, we, we can think of a few. Uh, the, the first one is the misconception of somebody either, on either side of the, of, of the spectrum saying we've done it. When you really will go and look into it, if the person saying it is, for instance, the CIO, most probably that person is not gonna have a good understanding of the operating systems. So they won't know the vulnerabilities associated with those, so that we've done it is not, is not there yet. We have seen th that situation in our assessments. And pretty much the opposite happens too. If you go, if you go through the COO saying we've done it, most probably that COO will be very aware of the operations, but not so much of the IT, and he will not be up to speed with the current vulnerabilities and issues with his IT network. So the, we've done it is very common, and we have seen organizations not being there yet. Okay. The other common is uh, we're not connected to anything, so we don't have any vulnerabilities. You know, people doesn't, they don't realize 
that they have wire connectivity and wireless connectivity now in some of those networks uh, that they don't even know. They haven't seen them because they don't see them in their routine operations. So when we do assessments, we realize that they have connections and they are surprised. And, and the other one is that the IT solutions, uh, call it uh, tools or call it best practices on IT, will resolve the whole issue with cybersecurity. The OT has been so uh, second priority when, for cybersecurity that just now the industry is starting to understand the issues and complexities about the OT world. So typically you will see offerings of IT components that have 15 years of experience securing IT networks. A lot of those tools are not applicable or even possible to be deployed in an OT setup. Yeah. And the, the situation with, uh, it's not about uh, all about IT because we see that uh, there, there is no real solution from an IT uh, side for the OT environment. Uh, although the OT environment is looking to the IT uh, organization for much of their protection. And another thing to look at, kind of the final issue to look at is, there's no silver bullet. Uh, looking at network mapping uh, and other tools like that, Many of those are not going to work in a in an OT on the OT side of the equation. The great thing about Parsons is that it's got 75 years of building, designing, building uh, a critical infrastructure. So that's a that's a huge foundation on which uh, we rest. Then more recently, uh, Parsons has acquired a couple of companies and built an organization called Parsons Federal, and those organizations have 30 years of experience in the cyber market. Uh, all the way from basic research, all the way up to operations and maintenance of those uh, uh, systems. So solid foundation on both sides. Yeah, I, I think Parsons has been really a pioneer in the IT, OT, uh, filling that gap in the knowledge base. Uh, and not only that, but he's been privileged by working with customers that are actually leading the industry when it comes to cybersecurity for critical infrastructure. So ICIT provides us with a lot of vectors to connect with the private sector and with government entities that are leading the path in cybersecurity. So it's a great opportunity for us to bring the real issues that we see in the field, for those guys to actually process, not only regulation, but awareness in the space to be able to provide different connections, partnership opportunities, and a lot of these thought process that we invested in housing.